The Scott community members gathered in a carving shed to witness a massive totem pole being raised in the village of Lak Zap. The totem pole belongs to the house of La. It is a replica of a totem pole that once stood in the village of Anki Da, but was taken from the community in the early 1900s. Samogit, or House Chief La, says he is thankful for the carvers in the community for joining to raise the pole. We can't say enough how, how wonderful, you know, how beautiful it felt. It was really something, you know, to, to see it move and to see it begin to come towards where it will rest and where the people will see it and enjoy it. So come forward! Dozens of community members carry the House of Lats totem pole to be transported through the village. Niska hereditary chiefs in the regalia walked with the pole. According to Samogat La, the original totem pole that is in the University of British Columbia Museum was carved by Niska Samogat Oye, who was sought after by people around the Northwest for his work. Greatest and probably the most well known at the time. Many, he apparently carved poles all over the Northwest here. According to the University of British Columbia's Museum of Anthropology website, the original totem pole washed down river in a severe flood in the 1900s, but was later purchased by anthropologist Marius Barbeau for the university in 1947. Last year, renowned Niska carver Jowett, or Calvin McNeil, was commissioned to carve the replica pole. Jowett says people from all over the world came to watch his team work and learn about the pole and Niska culture. This whole year, I've seen people from all over the world that. Uh, came to, to witness uh, the carving of such uh, a beautiful pole and uh, to understand a bit of our culture. The young Niska child inspected the pole to make sure it was ready to be raised. Jowett threw life into the totem pole and hereditary chiefs blessed the totem pole with cedar as part of the ceremony. Breathe the life into the pole. All that energy throughout that year went through me and into the pole. So uh, it was quite a relief because uh, a month leading up to this, it was pretty overwhelming. Uh, I was losing out in sleep, just uh, nervous, uh, excited, all the emotions that uh, a carver should go through too. The total pole was raised outside of the Lackle Zap Community Center. A large shaman, supernatural beaver, an eagle, are some of the designs carved into the pole. Jowett stated, totem poles are not just art pieces, but tell their history and who they are as Niska. The poles that you see, they look like a very fine art artwork, but they're a lot more than that. They're our history. They're our, our identity. This year, another totem pole is set to be repatriated from the National Museum of Scotland. According to Niska, over 100 totem poles from villages are living away from their lands. Samogat La would like to see all Niska poles that can be transported back to their territory to return home. All things being equal, I would love to have them all back, but uh, knowing that's not quite possible, we would like to get some of the uh, ones that people will recognize that are still there, that are being able to be replicated or for whatever we can do with them to bring them back. The Niska community plans to eventually raise two more totem poles outside the community center. Lee Wilson, APTN National News, Lackal Zap.